I first heard Stevie Wonder sing when I was in my teens. The album was called Twelve Year Old Genius, and he did Fingertips Part 1 and 2, along with a classic version of the song I'm Afraid the Masquerade is Over. I still cannot fathom how he tapped into that sound and experience when he was 12. I guess one could ask the same while listening to Michael Jackson at 5 or Bob Dylan at 21. Some people are selected to deliver the guidance of the muse long before the train leaves the station. I remember doing this interview. Um, He had just finished recording a, a seminal album called Songs in the Key of Life, and I was asked to show up at a studio in Hollywood to listen to the songs and then speak with Stevie. When I opened the door to the listening room, he was inside, alone, on the floor, under a table, making some adjustments to the cables that ran from the speakers. It was the first time we met. I asked if he needed any help. He didn't, and asked me if I was an Aquarian, which I am. Stevie Wonder has given us some of the most exquisite songs of any composer of our time. They are classics. His humanitarian efforts and inspiring messages of hope have touched millions. Here's an excerpt of that conversation. You have written so many uh, incredibly beautiful songs in, in preparation for this interview. Uh, last night and today I was going through some of your albums and playing some of the songs. One lyric that just was hauntingly beautiful to me, as, as it probably has been to people for two, three years now, is, is that concept of, of all is fair and love. Uh, I'd like you to just talk about that for a few moments to me. About, I mean, I understand what the, the theme, the line, but is it, is it true that all is fair and love, that in the context of love between two human beings, anything that they do with each other in some way has to be acceptable? I think if you really think or you really put love in its proper perspective, if you really deal with love um, unselfishly, if you relate to love not on just a physical level, if you relate first of all to liking a person, uh, from liking a person, getting to know them and understanding the things about them, the good and bad things, you then have uh, the option to, or you have the choice to go along with it or not go along with it. Love, I think, is not about changing a person into being what you want them to be, but accepting them for what they are. A lot of times in life, I believe that a lot of us get into love and we think, well, I will change this person into making them be the way that I think they should be or that is good for me. That's not love. I don't believe. To almost a completely different subject, uh, the the three things that I really did want to talk with you today was was love, spirituality, and politics. And you do this remarkable thing in your music and your being of combining all three of those elements, even though some seem to be in conflict with others. For instance, in in some of your music, you you suggest a higher spiritual sense, which would suggest that that the, the ultimate powers will take care of things. And then in other songs, you suggest that people have to go out and take the initiative on their own. I was wondering if you could address yourself to both of those. Are they in conflict? Do we do no? Both? Because they're inseparable. In that, the supreme being gives us all the abilities to do um, all things that man can do and even beyond that Mm -hmm. 
but it's up to us to really channel our energies in that direction. We do have, when we do deal with love or anything um, on, the, on the right level, um, I guess I just said, you know, um, so many of us do deal with love with just a physical level and you know, we have a physical attraction, for instance, for each other and then all of a sudden uh, we wonder then why didn't it last? You know? <laughs> and I, I can say this from, from experiencing certain things in my life and also from just um, my observation uh, to other people's lives. Um, we do have the power to change things. A lot of that um, comes from just our attitude about what is happening, about dealing more positively even with negative things. In my songs, I criticize, but I only look at, I only try to do it with, with a constructive criticism for um, uh, optimistic tomorrow, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. Are you basically optimistic about tomorrow? I am, basically I am. Um, um, even though in a lot of songs one would think he's very pessimistic mm -hmm. about everything. <laughs> it's not so. Music itself um, deals with a great deal of optimism. And, and um, with music, whether you play in a minor or a major, I mean a lot of times you, people think of a minor, for instance, as a, as a sad key. It is not so. Because there's, there's um, uh, as Camille Jamon said, I can't remember the complete or the proper quote, but it's like, there's joy in your sorrow, as there's, you know, there must be sorrow in your joy. Mm. And they are inseparable again. Mm. Um, this is a difficult one, and, 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 if, and if it disturbs you to discuss it, please tell me. No. But I, I, I want to ask you just a couple of questions about you being without sight, is that okay? Oh no, we talk about being blind. Just say blind. Um, I never, I never know anymore what the what the proper phraseology is with all of these things. You visually have, handicapped or blind, it doesn't really matter, um, and it doesn't bother me at all. Great, not at all. You've been blind since birth. You've never uh, physically seen any visual impressions. What do you see and right now, as as we sit here and talk? Is it Black? Is it white? Is there color? Are there shadows? Is there movement? Is there energy? When you dream at night, do you see pictures? No. Um, my dreams are the same as, as, as um, my life. I mean, I don't see anything as I'm, as I'm here. Any kind of picture that I have in my mind of something is because I've been told basically what it is like or I've come to a preconception of maybe colors um, or red automatically I would then think of fire or, mm -hmm. um, uh, or just something that is very bright, you know. Um, green, uh, I would think of a bright light, a flashy light. Um, orange, I would think of an orange, I mean, but I would <laughs> think of an orange even with the way that an orange tastes, you see. Um, do you understand that when I say I do. The way in, a, taste? in other words, you're just changing the senses from the sense of sight to the sense of taste. Well, in that, in that one, for instance, yes. I mean, an orange is a very um, it tastes interesting. Orange. Yeah, it's you understand it's I a do very understand. interesting taste. In black, there is a great deal of mystery. In um, green, uh, I, when I when I think of grief, green, green, I, I think I think of. Um, a very um, flat surface, hmm. you see, very straight ahead. Something smooth. You know, exactly, hmm. you know, very smooth surface. Um, when I think of pink, I think of, uh, I, of something, uh, uh, a relatively humorous color. Humorous? Uh-huh. Now, I don't know if that is what it's about, um, but that's what I get. If I was to sit here right now and close my eyes, or if the listeners listening to us now around the country close their eyes, 
we see new things. There seems to be, in my case anyway, an absence of color. As you talk to me now, are you perceiving colors, shapes, lines, is uh, anything like that? The mental, mental shapes, mental colors that I'm able to perceive only because I have been given at some previous time <clears throat> an understanding verbally of what the color is about, what it's I like. See. So therefore, I think if a person closed their eyes, uh, uh, they would think of what they, you know, as what they saw, what has been recorded, I guess, in the subconscious, and that it would appear in the conscious for you to be aware of what, you, what you're thinking or what you're seeing, you would be able to basically picture things as how you see them. I think that's part of, like, the imagining uh, of an artist uh, has a picture of something in his mind and um, no one else can see that but him. And you do have those imaginings and you do see those inner pictures. Yes. When you dream at night, do you dream in pictures? I dream just as I as I live now. I mean, there, there are no pictures. Now, when I say pictures, I mean, uh, um, if I was to dream, or when I do dream, uh, of anything, it's just as I am in a normal I life. Ah, that's very you interesting. See? There's no there's no difference between no difference. your waking state and your dreaming state with respect to what you see. No, it's the same difference. I mean, this is all that I know. So. Um, how I see things now is how I would see things then, or do see things then. Um, there's no way possible for a person to see in their dreams that's blind. I mean, really, you know. Some people um, say that they are able to see in their dreams. Um, if they're able to see in their dreams, they then must have been able to see some early part of their life to be able to see something. And you never had that? No. So I don't miss it, you see what I mean? I don't, it's not like uh, an absence of, of, of something I never knew what it was like. If, if sight could be given to you for just two or three moments, what would you like to see? What of all the things that people have described to you would you like to look at? I would like to see the earth, first of all. I would like to see my daughter, Aisha. I'd like to see people. I don't think that I would want to permanently see, only because I don't know. I mean, it would be an incredible adjustment that I would have to make. Uh, I couldn't, for instance, relate to um, a person saying to another one, "You can't come in because you're black, or you can't. Your daughter can't go to the school because you're, you understand." Because mm -hmm. these conditions are conditions that we have made possible, and children have nothing to do with the bitterness that we have created, mm -hmm. you see. So, um, there again we talk about um, levels of love and, and making things change, a positive change. It is possible for us to channel positive energy or good energy or just at least giving the children a chance to experience many different kinds of life, many different cultures, and understanding what people are about, and not stereotyping them, but really dealing with people for what they are, so that they can have a better understanding of what people in life is about, to make then, for the next generation, a lot uh, more intelligent, a lot more wiser, um, and I would say wisdom uh, uh, first, and then uh, knowledge, intelligence, um, and the feeling of love, I mean, an honest love. Mm -hmm. What about the money, Stevie? A lot of people are interested in, in that subject. You have, um, well, uh, you know, according to all uh, newspaper reports and trade publications, the amount of money that you have accumulated through record sales is up with Elvis Presley and uh, the, you know any other single vocalist in the history of the world. You have uh, amassed millions and millions of dollars. How have those millions uh, changed your life? You know, sometimes I, I, I feel bad to even receive things or get things. I feel like um, I don't deserve that. Now, a lot of that comes from the fact that I remember when we couldn't have mm -hmm. these things. And a lot of people seem, some people do forget these things, but 
It's an experience in my life that I shall never forget, only because there are many people in the world that still have to experience not having a refrigerator and having their food on the back porch, and um, and when it gets warm outside, the food spoils, and and um, not having a radio and not having a television, and some of the things that we, as uh, Americans, uh, take for granted, are luxuries, and. That's one of the reasons why I would like to go, um, for instance, Africa and some of the other countries to experience not having a television. Um, I think the television is good, but then again, it isn't because there has been, because of it, a lack of communication mm -hmm. within the homes. Uh, people talk less and watch more and don't really get into each other or get into the family life. Could that also be true of phonograph records? No way. <laughs> no. No way. No. I, I think that if you do any way of um, anything that doesn't bring about more communicating between people is not good. So okay. if a person listens to records that mu too much, quite naturally, yes, I would say that is true. Two more questions, then I'll let you get back no, to work. No, it's okay. Um, Africa. I think we're heard in Africa. I'm almost certain we are. Uh, you, I've heard you speak uh, about a year or two ago about a, a closeness. And oh, we did. I hate to read. We did a song in um, Zulu. It's called Gikulela. What does that literally mean, translated? Um, it's Gikulela, as I am singing. I am singing. Uh, Sasa is uh, of tomorrow. Kiyakula, um, I'm uh, singing, uh, I think it's another, Ngotanda, um, of love. Kiyakula, uh, Kilingi Langa, Utanda, Niabusa, Jikelele, Jikelele, Gulam Shabo, Gulam Shabo, we too. It's, I'm singing, uh, someday, someday love will reign throughout this world of ours. I'm singing of love from my heart. I'm very happy about it. I really it's am happy because I've always wanted to do a song in, in uh, an African language because there again, when we talk of, um, of, of me as a black person, I am um, very proud of my people, mm -hmm. we as a people. I'm very proud of, um, of all people though. And, I would be more happier and more proud if we tried a little harder to reach some of those things um, that are untouchable, that you're not able to touch them, um, that are not materialistic things, things that last far, um, far on after um, life as we know it today. For when the body dies, the soul has to live. Final question, Stevie. Carrying that subject one step further, after you leave us, after you're taken from us, and I hope that won't be for a good long time, because I love your music and I think you're swell. But Not when, go anywhere. But the, <laughs> Not but, go anywhere. But when that does happen, how would you like to be remembered? How would you like people to think of you when they think of Stevie Wonder a hundred years from now, fifty? Um, wow. I would like to feel that I did contribute something um, uh, to the world uh, from my people, and I'd like to feel that um, I um, have given something from all of us on this earth, as, as one of us on the earth, because all of us do give something. Everyone in the world plays a very important role in this world. Uh, a perfect song that says that is the Earth, Wind and Fire song, uh, Shining Star. Mm. It is the fact that you are a shining star, no matter who you are. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stevie Wonder.